I'm George Williams and welcome back to my Lotus Exige. Today I'm going to be talking about this, it's the AIM MX2E plug and play dash logger kit for Lotus Exige and LEs. So what's so good about this? This digital dash, so it's a screen with various bits around it, is fully plug and play and when I say plug and play I mean it because it took me about 10 minutes to install and it worked perfectly straight away. That is pretty much unheard of with most manufacturer or aftermarket products and to me that's pretty amazing and it makes it a really viable OEM plus solution. So let's actually show you the dashboard and then I'm going to show you the Smarty Cam as well afterwards. Let's open this up. Data hub. Channel expansion so I can have multiple sensors. Here we have the Smarty Cam HD. And the bit that really matters, the actual dash. So here you can see the dashboard and also the binnacle that they supply and you've actually got buttons here on the side. So the other things that we've got, we've got a few different wires which I need to work out what's what, extension cables and what's interesting here is we actually, if I can focus, have a very very small reversing camera which I am very impressed with actually, that's really nice quality. Okay, on to the Smarty Cam and the actual camera and chargers, everything like that. So the thinking is that I will hardwire this into my car so that I can always do video whenever necessary and when I'm on track I have data logging and everything like that which will hopefully improve my driving, make me, make me quicker, make me smoother hopefully, etc. Okay, I'm in quite a bright situation, but I've got the camera mounted finally and I should be able to show you a little bit of the settings and how this dash works. So first of all, I'm going to go into preferences because I think this is a cool bit. So for every screen you have, you have road and track options. So I'm going to show you everything. So if I go onto track, then exit out, you can see in that bit there that you would have the track timer so if we go back into menu which is this button here back into display I'll come out of track and I will show you the digital option so if I exit out again you can see you've got a nice big rev counter very clear speedo you can see the fuel you can see everything nicely I haven't got the extra sensors enabled yet um, let me go back into the settings again and I will show you so you do of course have a track version of that as well which has your lap timing and data logging. But I'm going to keep it on road and show you a few different colours. So you have purple, yellow, white and blue and of course if I go back up to analogue you have those colour options for that as well. Personally I like the blue one, don't know why it just seems to be the clearest to me so it doesn't match anything on the car but that's what I am sticking with. You of course have the different options, so if I then come out, you have loads of different options. Gears here, I'm not going to do it now, but when you first set it up, the dash actually works out what gear you're in as it's effectively a ratio to your speed and revs. So that's really clever, that works really well actually. So let me go back, you've got your shift lights, you actually have to um, do that on the computer which is fairly simple actually measurements it's all fairly simple date and time it's a nice easy to use system I'm not going to show you everything on it because half the fun of getting a new dash is actually working it out yourself um, reverse camera I haven't connected yet 
but I do have in the box ready to do so. I'll show you guys when I've got it all connected. Uh, trip counter, so you've actually got four different options for this, uh, which is really nice. If you're doing a road trip or a track day, you want to have one saying how much you've done on that tank of fuel and the other one saying how much you've done in total on either that day or that trip. So having four of those is really useful. Wi-Fi for connecting your computer. System info, check you're on the latest firmware and there you go. So it's fairly simple to use to be honest. Um, let me start the engine up. And you can see there was an immobiliser light there which is now off and then we start the engine. So this all works quite well, it's nice and easy to use. Um, as I rev the engine a little bit you can see it moving. Um, if I change back to the digital display, as you can see I can do it really quickly. One thing I would say, which I didn't expect, is you cannot change that display whilst you're moving. You cannot even get into the preferences. You can do it when you're stationary again. It's a safety thing. Personally, I would prefer it if it wasn't like that, but I understand why AIM have done it like that. And it, To me it shows the OEM nature of this dash. Um, you can see a lot of reflections in the screen. Um, in all honesty, it's not as bad as it looks on the camera in real life. Um, it is a glossy screen, but I'm on a very bright day today, so this is about the worst you'd ever see it, and the camera's not quite looking at it from the angle that you would see it from where I'm sitting. So, I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna attempt to drive a little bit. So let me put my harness on. Go for a drive. You can see the gear shift indicator as well is working quite nicely. Nice and easy to use. There are lots of people selling this kit. Um, one of my favorite retailers is Dave at Seriously Lotus. So I'm just gonna give him a quick shout out. Go to his website, link below. And I hope that a lot of my friends out there and followers have this kit on their car soon because it's freaking awesome. I know there'll be some comments saying about my previous Dash, the Gar, and I think the fairest way I can say how they compare is the GAR is half the price and I think it's half the product. It's a lot of money for the AIM, um, especially once you've done the Smarty Cam and the extras, but it's probably better money spent in terms of your track analysis than you would be even from upgrading your power. So actually when you think of it that way and how much your driving can improve and how much you can learn, it's money really quite well spent. Okay, the heating's on. It's too hot in England. So I think there'll be a future video when we actually go probably to Silverstone and test and see how all the data makes a difference, I'm sure with how rusty I am at driving on track. By the end of the day, we will have knocked off quite a bit of my lap times. I'm sure circuit days will be running some great events soon. I do. What don't I like about this dash? Because I've been very positive and rightfully so. In all honesty, there's not a lot that I don't like. I can pick at things if I want to, so the shift lights and the indicators are too high up so I'm about six foot but I've got tillets so I've got a bit of headroom and I can't see them at all when I'm driving if I'm honest um, so they're all well and good to have but I need to reposition the screen somehow um, what they should do as an easy solution is just have movable bolts and then you can set the screen height as you wish and then tighten it up 
to me that would be quite an easy thing to do. I'm actually probably going to do that anyway soon. I hope you've enjoyed this analysis into this new dashboard. Now, I'm not going to claim to be a total expert in it yet. I've had it on the dash a week. I've done about 100 miles, so not too much. And it's been absolutely faultless so far. So, to me, that's all you could ask for. Um, when I put a new product in my car that's aftermarket, I tend to expect a few problems. So this is a real nice change. <laughs> Just run the wire through from the dash to the smarty cam just roughly rooted it round and when i've started the camera recording it actually says on the dashboard a little recording logo which is nice please if you've enjoyed the video like and subscribe very soon i'll have a load more content coming i'm actually quite excited about getting out, road tripping again, seeing the world and trying out some new cars. So my next video is actually going to be driving the Lotus Evora Sport 410 and seeing how it compares to this because I think that'll be really interesting. I don't actually have my old dash so while I'm out I'm going to show you just how easy it is to install this dash and it, it really is very easy. So first of all screw there screw there same on the other side and two underneath so i'm going to quickly do that once the screws are out pull this bit out get rid of it and then gently pull down over the actual column and that just removes gently like that when that's done you can literally just pull this section off the binnacle of course because I've already got the aim in it I have some wires connected and once you've got that out you can see two bolts there and the same on the other side so unfortunately my camera stopped working at that point but basically what you do is you unscrew those four bolts and then you can access the back of that plastic trim where you can ultimately bolt the aim in there are some connectors, they're pretty self-explanatory. There is one that went into your old dash, that then goes into your new dash. There are no harnesses or anything, it just plugs and plays. Once you've got everything connected up, you literally just do the reverse and connect it up, go for a drive. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.